So you want to run faster. You're trying really hard, but it's just not happening. You might be guilty of making some of the worst mistakes that we runners make, but don't worry. I'm gonna talk about these common bad habits and how you can turn them around to make sure that your hard efforts are the right ones the ones that are gonna make you a faster runner. Now running is a long game, we know that. You gotta put in the hard work week in, week out, consistently to see those results and to start to see the times tumbling down. But what if you're consistently doing it wrong? One of the most common mistakes that we make, both as new runners and seasoned athletes alike, is focusing all in on the consistency point and forgetting about an arguably more important factor, taking it easy. And I hear you, it doesn't make sense. I'm trying to run faster, Philly. Why are you telling me to slow down? Often it doesn't make sense to people until they've tried it and realized that they feel so much better on their workout days and race days thanks to taking all of their other runs super easy. And I've been guilty of this in the past, smashing all my runs, killing all my sessions and my long run, and being left feeling flat on race day when my body is trying to say, well, duh, you idiot, we maxed ourselves out for the past four weeks every single day, the race day tank is empty. It was only when I really tuned in to how I felt on my easy days, looking at my heart rate instead of pace and switching my focus from hitting eight miles in 50 minutes to saying, the purpose of this run is for active recovery. Wait a minute. What the hell is active recovery? Active recovery is using light exercise to get the blood flowing back into your muscles again in order to speed up recovery from those hard workouts. And to do this, you really don't need to be maxing yourself out, not even close. And if you do max yourself out, you end up slowing down that recovery process. So your legs can't hit the key sessions, the intervals, the tempo or the race as fast as they'd have been able to had you just taken it easy. And I really can't say this enough, take Making your easy runs genuinely easy, which means staying in zone one to two, conversational pace, feeling relaxed, will mean that your body is able to adapt to the harder training days you've been doing, absorbing all that quality training, and crucially, building that fitness that gets you to the faster times that you're targeting. I'm doing my easy run today. My heart rate is below 150. That's the sort of cap for me on my easy days. So I'm keeping it low. I'm able to talk to you guys, although that is increasing my heart rate a little bit, but I'm running at conversational pace, which for me is between 7.30 to eight minute miling. That's what easy is for me. And for context, my 10K pace is more like 5.10 to 5.15 minute miling. So it's totally individual. I must say though, it is harder to keep it easy and conversational and keep your heart rate down whilst talking to camera at 7,000 feet of altitude, but we're rolling with it. It is a beautiful chilled run today. And I had an 8K volume track session yesterday. We ran really hard up here at 7,000 feet. That was one of the hardest days of the week. So I'm welcoming a much needed, chilled, easy five miles today, ready to go again for the long run tomorrow. And one thing that I really cannot overstate is running at your easy pace, not your running buddy's easy pace, not what some online calculator tells you, but honestly, feeling easy, being able to hold a conversation, recovering, and just enjoying an easy run. That's what they're there for. Soak up the scenery. It's beautiful. And that was a beautiful easy run. Cold, but beautiful. And letting go of any particular decided or perfect pace leads me nicely into another slippery slope, being a perfectionist. 
lot of runners and just sportsmen and women in general can have perfectionist tendencies. I myself have been guilty of being a massive perfectionist in the past and I still am to a degree, but I know when to switch it on and when to try and shut it down. And this one is definitely two-sided because being a perfectionist can really help you as a runner, but too much of it is gonna hinder your progress. With perfectionism comes that black and white thinking and associating one specific result with success and anything else is a failure, which is a pretty extreme way of thinking. If you're a perfectionist runner, you demand the highest standards of yourself, which brings positive attributes, commitment, determination, even motivation. So why is that a bad thing and how can it harm your running? If you're a complete perfectionist in all areas of your running, you're going to think negatively about yourself a lot. You'll know if this is you because you'll be really hard on yourself when you miss your expectations. I didn't hit all my splits today, my form isn't perfect, even blaming yourself for things totally outside your control, like missing a target time on a super windy day or just getting injured. That negative outlook on yourself is going to make running way more tiring than it needs to be because you're going to be constantly fighting against your internal monologue. So perfectionists tend to be overly self-critical even when they've done their best. So they're more likely to then train through an injury or through illness because taking extra rest doesn't fall inside their expectations or how they'd planned things to play out. And ultimately, it also makes running less fun because you don't give yourself credit for when it's due and you put so much pressure on yourself to perform in a specific way. So you missed your target time on race day by 10 seconds and it was a super windy day. Or maybe you got hardly any sleep because of something that was outside of your control. This doesn't mean that it was a failure you can and should still celebrate the successes of the weeks of solid training and sessions that you did leading up to that race. The success of smashing your warm up routine and the success of learning how to work on your pacing strategy. The list goes on. It's not just about that final outcome of a time or a performance. So if this sounds like you, the first step is recognizing it and being aware of it. Then what you need to try and do is retrain your brain and instead of shooting for perfect, give yourself a parameter and anywhere between good and perfect still counts as success. Be the voice that you would want to be to a friend and hold on to that awareness of those perfectionist tendencies so that when you set a goal, it's not just black and white. And speaking of goals, this is a hugely neglected area, which in my opinion is another massive mistake. Goals, why do you need them? Can't I just run and see what happens? Sure, you can, but if you want to improve as a runner, goals are a really useful tool that are gonna help you get there and probably help you achieve your fullest potential. And without them, all of your efforts are gonna be undirected shooting in the dark if you like and you might underachieve as a result and goals don't just have to be useful for races those big goals are really important to help keep you focused and remind you what you're driving for why you're even doing the training but setting mini goals along the way to that big goal does the same thing and can help improve your focus when a big goal seems really far away in the future. A big goal for me last year was running my first marathon. The A goal was to run that marathon in 2.32 and the B goal was sub 2.35. Spoiler alert, I hit the B goal, but I set myself other goals working backwards from this so that the big scary goal had smaller, less scary goals that I could hit along the way. Running a half marathon at 2.32 marathon pace, hitting 80 miles a week in a training week, and getting comfortable practicing my drink strategy in training. These smaller goals along the way were hardly scary at all and I could tick them off week by week, improving my confidence and also ticking things off that made it more likely that I was going to hit that big scary goal. If those small little goals are really carefully picked to align with the big goal, you're onto a winner. The point is, when you set yourself goals as a runner, you're creating a blueprint for the path you want to take and the outcome you want to achieve. So you're more likely to follow that with actions that propel you towards that goal because you've literally motivated yourself to do so. Especially if it's written down in a place that you're going to see it, 
every day. When setting your own personal running goals, think about what you want. What goal is going to excite you? Don't just write down what you think you should do or what everyone else is doing. Oh, my friend's aiming for a sub 20 minute 5K, so I guess I should just do that too. And your goals need to be what fire you up because they're your goals, not anyone else's. And I've talked about setting scary goals a lot on my channel, not least, quitting my job to pursue my dream of running at the Olympics. And if that sounds intriguing to you, why not check out this video to find out how and why I made that leap of faith.